Thanks for tuning in with us at Dream City Church Omaha. For further information, including past sermons, visit us online at dreamcityomaha.church. We hope you enjoy the message and that it has a positive impact on your life. Are you happy to be in church this morning? Amen. It's good to see you guys. And, and if this is your first time and, and you're just joining us today, my name is Pastor John. I'm the lead pastor here at Dream City Church, and we are uh, just excited to have you. And thank you for coming and worshiping with us this morning. Today, we are going to continue our series entitled Growing Pains. How many of you guys have enjoyed this series so far? It's good stuff. This is the third week of the series. Week number one, we started, and, uh, and we talked about how healthy things grow. That, that we were all created to grow, that God told Adam and Eve in the beginning to be fruitful and multiply, and, and we were created for growth, but we have to be healthy in order to grow. Healthy things grow and growing things change, and how that sometimes we can overcomplicate growth in, in you know, how do I know that I'm growing? When do I know if I'm growing? How do I grow? And, and really, growth is simply positive change. How do I know if I'm growing? Is there positive change in your life? Is my marriage growing? Is there positive change in your marriage? And, and not overcomplicating it, but just recognizing it for what it is. And then last week, Pastor Don preached and did a great job of talking about the process that we must go through. Because growth is a process. We all wish it could happen overnight. We all wish we could snap our fingers and be done. But, but that's not the way the world works. That's not the way that God works. That's not the way it works in nature. That's not the way it works anywhere. You don't just get to snap your fingers and instantly arrive at your destination or where you want to be. Listen, I just got done with a road trip and drove 17 hours from Galveston, Texas back to Omaha. And we got home at like three in the morning yesterday. And so I understand wishing you could snap your fingers and be somewhere. I understand going on a journey and looking at the map and saying, I thought we would be further along than this. But we've had to stop and pee 17 times in the last half hour. Not my wife, my kids. Uh, but I understand, I understand what that's like. But that's not the way it works. We're all on this journey and we all have to go through this process. And so that was last week. And, and if you've missed out on one of the first couple of weeks, I would just encourage you to download the app or check out the website, go back and watch those videos because we're just going to continue to build on uh, to what we've, what we've started and where we've been. And so this morning, John chapter 15, if you have your Bibles, we're going to read verses 1 through 4. If you don't have your Bibles, the scriptures will be up on the screens for you. I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and this is what Jesus says. He's talking to his disciples. And he says, I am the true grapevine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that doesn't produce fruit, and he prunes the branches that do bear fruit so they will produce even more fruit. You have already been pruned and purified by the message that I have given you. Re or excuse me, re remain in me, and I will remain in you. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed from the vine, and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain in me. Let's pray together this morning. God, we thank you for your word. Lord, I pray that over the next few moments, God, that you would speak through me, that you would speak to us. God, that you would have your way. Holy Spirit, we give you complete control to do what, what you want to do. I pray that you would open our hearts, God, open our eyes and open our ears, that we would hear from you today. Lord, I pray that as we, we take your word, that we would apply it to our lives, that we wouldn't just be hearers, but help us to be doers, because it's in the doing that the transformation occurs. It's not in the hearing, it's in the, it's in the doing. And we all want to be like that wise man who, who took your words and built his house upon the rock and did what you said to do. So Lord, help us to be doers today. We pray, we thank you, and we love you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 Like I said, we were, we were in, in Texas for a week, and school starts next week. And so, so Angel and I decided, let's take the kids down and We'll go to Dallas for a few days. We'll, we'll go down to the beach for a few days and, you know, just to get away before school starts. And so that's what we did. So we, we went down to Dallas. We stayed with some friends in Dallas for three days. And, and many of you know uh, I'm a 49ers fan. And, and I feel like I failed as a dad because I'm raising a Cowboys fan. And so we go to Dallas and he's like, Dad, can we go tour the stadium? I'm like, of course we can't go tour the stadium. So we went and toured the practice facility and uh, in their world headquarters. And so we're, we're going through it. And, and you understand, I, I can't stand the Cowboys, but I will say their facilities are insane and ridiculous. And, you know, I was sending some friends pictures, and one, one of my friends texted me back. He's like, you're not coming back a Cowboys fan, are you? Like, God, no. 
Like, not only am I not coming back a Cowboys fan, but I put a 49er sticker under Jerry Jones's chair in the, in the Cowboys. Where, no, I'm just kidding. I didn't do that. If for some reason Mr. Jones is watching this, I did not put a 49er sticker under your chair that you know of. Um, and so we hung, out in, we hung out in Dallas for a few days. We went down to Galveston, and, and we're on the beach for a few days. And, uh, and it was the third day that we were there. We were, you know, the kids were out in the waves riding, riding boogie boards, and, and I came walking, you know, I was playing with them, came walking out of the, the water and walking up to where Angel was. And in my mind, it was kind of like slow motion, like David Hasselhoff uh, kind of thing going on. And came walking, came walking. I'm sure that's not what it probably looked like a beach whale rolling up the, rolling up this, the, the, the beach. But, but I come walking out of the water and I'm like a foot of water and I'm walking in this water and, and I hear this and I feel this crunch. And in my mind, I thought it was a crab because the night before we were out there with flashlights and there were crabs running all over the beach. And so immediately when it happened, I thought, well, that was, that I stepped on a crab, like stupid crab, and it hurt. And so I hopped all the way from the water to where Angel was, and I, I, I fell onto the towel, and she, she took a towel, and she wrapped it up. And, and I, I told her, I said, I stepped on a crab. She's like, what'd you do? I stepped on a crab, stupid crab. There's a crab. She, How'd you step on a crab? I don't know, but it had to be a crab. And I turned around, looked behind me, and there was a trail of blood from the water all the way to where I was. And I said, that wasn't a crab. And... And Jace came walking up with a broken wine glass and three pieces in, in one of God's children, one of his creation, uh, decided to have a drink on the beach, I'm assuming, and left the wine glass near the water. Tide came in, took it out, brought it back. Of the 57 miles of shoreline that is the, the Galveston Island, it happened to be in the one place where I was walking on that morning and stepped right on it. And so, so I'm laying on the towel and, and, and I'm thinking to my head, like, there's no way I'm going to the hospital. I'm on vacation. Like, rub some dirt on it. We'll be okay. Like, tourniquet, as long as I don't lose my foot, we'll be good. We're on vacation. We're going to make this work. And so I told Angel, I said, take a picture of it. And so she took a picture of it, and she showed it to me. I was like, we got to go to the hospital. <laughs> like, this is no bueno. This is not good right now. And so I did what, what I always do when I have a medical question. I sent a picture to my brother and said, what do you think? Because he's a doctor. And he said, you need to go to the hospital. And so... Uh, I, I hopped, Angel went and got the car. She brought it over. I hopped to the car. Angel and the kids stayed at the beach, and I drove myself to the urgent care. And he said, Pastor John, how did you do that? Listen, you don't, you don't know about your pastor. Like, John Rambo was based on my life. <laughs> One, two, and three. And so, and so I'm driving myself, but I, have, but I have the window rolled down, and I have my foot out the window, and I've got my T-shirt tied you know, tied my foot and my t-shirt and there's like dripping, like dripping blood and I'm driving to the urgent care like this with my foot out the window and I come to a red light and I look over and the lady next to me is just sitting there and she's just like this. <laughs> like, what do you want me to do, lady? I'm sorry. So I get to the urgent care and I hop in and, and they take the t-shirt off and when they take the t-shirt off, like chunks of flesh came off with it. I would show you the picture, but it's almost lunchtime and I don't want to ruin your lunch. Uh, if you want to see it, you can come find me after service. I'll show you the picture. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's like four inches wide. It's super deep. And so, so they take me back into the room and the lady says, okay, I'm going to give you some shots to numb it, but because of where the wound is, you're still going to feel everything. She said, all of your nerve endings are in your foot and, and really in this area. And so because of where, I'll give you the shots, but you're still going to feel it. So she gave me the shots, and then she said, we have to do x-rays, make sure all the glass is out. And, and after we did the x-rays, now we got to clean it out. And clean it out basically meant she was going to take a rake and a power washer. And, and like, that's what it felt like. And, and she had this syringe, and she was squirting. It felt like she was power washing this cut in my foot because it hurt so bad. And then she says, okay, you're, you're probably going to, you know, we're going to need to stitch it up. I said, how many stitches do you think? She said, I'm thinking like 10 to 12. And I felt every single one of those 10 to 12. And it was just me and her. And she said, rule number one, and really it's the only rule in here, don't kick me in the face. And I said, lady, what if I punch you in the face? <laughs> and so she's, <laughs> she's stitching me up, 
and I feel everything, and I'm screaming. Like, you know when you take your kids to the doctor to get, like, their kindergarten shots, or, like, a, even if it's, like, a routine checkup, and the kid next door is screaming their head off, and it drives fear into your child? Like, I feel bad for the other people in this urgent care because they probably think that they were doing, like, an amputation with, with no pain medication. And so I'm screaming, and this nurse comes in from outside. I was that loud. She's like, do you need some help? I was like, just let me hold your hand. And she comes over, and she's holding my hand. I'm squeezing the life out of her. And the, 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 the doctor who stitched me up, she's like, I appreciate why you're moving, but I need you not to move. I was like, lady, let me drive this into your foot and see if you don't move. Like, I need you not to move right now. And the nurse is there and she's like, ooh, baby, that looks bad. I was like, I know it looks bad. Just let me squeeze your hand. And the, the doctor goes, the doctor goes, in order for it to heal properly, we have to clean it out thoroughly. And in order for it to get better, it's going to have to hurt for a little bit. And in that moment, I thought, why, God? Because, because for the last couple of weeks, I've been planning and preparing for this message. And you know how, how you know, when, when I speak, I like to bring stories into, into the, the, to the, to the, the situation so that it helps us better understand the point that the Scripture is making or the point that Jesus is making. And so, so I, I share my life with you guys. And this week, the, the topic is the fact that growth is painful. And when she said it has to, it has to, to hurt in order for it to get better, I thought, God, why? I, I don't need a story this bad. <laughs> like, there's other stories I could have used. Like, why couldn't I be preaching on growth is the most joyous experience of your life? Like, give me a story for that one, God. But here we are today, talking about the fact that growth is painful. And it hurts. And there's things that we have to go through. And there's things that we have to endure in order to, to be who God's created us to be, in order to get where he's, he's designated and ordained for us to go. There are things in life that, that we have to go through. And it's easy in those times to get discouraged. It's easy in those times to give up. It's easy in those times to quit. But, but today we have to endure through that. Not only do we have to endure, but we really have to embrace this pruning process. And, and in John chapter 15, verses 1 through 4, Jesus is really talking about this pruning process. You know, he says, all the branches that, that don't bear fruit, my father, who's the gardener, he'll cut those branches off. He says, any branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. And he cuts stuff off of those branches. Why? So that they can produce more fruit. So we all have to go through this pruning process. And, and what that what that tells me is whether we, are, whether we are fruitful or not, whether we are growing or we're not growing, whether we're healthy or we're not, whether we're in him or we're not, we're going to get cut. Whether you're bearing fruit or you're not, you're going to get pruned. Either way, it doesn't matter. So we, better, we, we, we might as well get ourselves to a place of, of embracing it of enduring it, of, of looking at it with a new perspective. And so in preparation for this message, I began studying and looking at, at pruning and gardening and vineyards. And I learned more in the last couple of weeks studying vineyards and in the pruning process than I did in all of my biology classes that I've ever taken to this day. And I learned that, that what they would do in vineyards especially is rather than planting, rather than planting seeds to grow a new vine, what they would do is they would cut a branch off, a, a, a young branch, a healthy branch off of a new vine and bring it over to an old existing trunk, an old existing vine, and they would cut a notch in the existing trunk and a notch, a matching notch in the new branch, and they would stick it in and then they would wrap it up. It was called grafting. They would graft a, a new branch into this old vine. Now, why would they do that? Why wouldn't they just let it grow on their own? Because they found that depending on, on how the pollination, and we're getting really scientific today, so stay with me, depending on how the pollination process worked determined what kind of fruit it would produce. And so if you just took a grape and planted the seed, you weren't sure of what kind of fruit you would get. The only way to guarantee the fruit that that branch would produce would be to marry it and graft it into this trunk because this trunk produces this fruit. And because I know this trunk produces this fruit, if I bring these branches into this trunk, I know that these branches will produce that fruit. Whereas if I leave them alone, who knows what they'll produce? 
And so this, this process of grafting gives a new perspective to this text. And when Jesus says, remain in me and I'll remain in you, it, it, it illuminates it in a whole different way. Even in Romans chapter 11, we find Paul talking about, he, he's writing to the Gentiles and he says, you Gentiles were, were grafted into Abraham's tree and, and you were once wild olive shoots, but you're no longer wild shoots because you've been grafted into God's family. It's this process of, of taking this branch in and marrying it to the tree to ensure the fruit that it produces. And so as we look at John 15, just what Jesus is talking about, we were once out here, but God has brought us into his family. We're attached to him. We're connected in him. We're, we're grafted into his family. And now that we're grafted into his family, we have to bear fruit. And so now comes this pruning process. And, and I started looking up, you know, what are the steps in the pruning process? Why does, does pruning happen? And, and as I, I studied it out, I found that, that it really correlates to this text today. And if you're taking notes, the first thing and the first step in the pruning process, and the first thing I want you to write down is that, that the first thing you have to do is clean up. The first step is in cleaning up. And this is where you remove any dead, any de diseased, or any damaged branches or limbs. Anything that's dead, anything that has no growth, you cut that thing off. And it's what Jesus says in verse 2. He says, my father, he, he cuts off every branch that's in me that doesn't produce fruit. This is the cleanup phase. Now, now, when it comes to our lives and the pruning that God does for us, the cleanup phase really is about discipline. How many of you guys like discipline? How many of you like being disciplined? How many of you as kids liked being disciplined? None of us, right? Like, like we, we, we didn't like that. I, I look back on all of the spankings that I've gotten as a child, and I can't even remember them all because there was that many. But I guarantee you, each and every one, not one of them did I get done and say, thank you, Father, may I have another? Like, that doesn't happen. Nobody, nobody does that. We don't like getting disciplined at home, at work, at school, whatever. The, the Bible says, says this in, in Hebrews. Go ahead and put that Hebrew scripture up there. It says that all discipline seems to be more pain than pleasure at the time. How many of you understand that? More pain than pleasure at the time, yet later it produces a transformation of character, bringing a harvest of righteousness and peace to those who what? Yield to it. This, is the, this, this word is the key to all of this. Yield to it. You can yield to the process or you can resist the process. The whole time she was stitching me up, she said, I need you just not to move. I know it hurts, but, but if you don't move, it's going to go so much quicker. Is it going to hurt as bad? Yeah, it's still going to hurt as bad. Then I'm going to move. But if you don't move, it's going to be so much. If you would just yield to the process, it would be so much quicker. In our lives, if we would just yield to the discipline that God brings to us, we would get where we're going so much quicker rather than like the children of Israel have to circle that mountain for 40 years until they finally learn the lesson that they need to, le to, to learn. Listen, God will never take you to the next test until you pass the one you're taking right now. There is no, no child left behind. If you fail, guess what? You're taking it again. And then you're taking it again. And until you learn what God is trying to teach you in that moment, you will never progress to where he's taking you. And so, so we, we have to understand that there are times where we're being pruned that God is disciplining us. And when you're pruning a tree, one of the first things that you have to do, you, you clear out the dead branches and, and all that, but there are these things called suckers. Does anybody know what a sucker is? Suckers are the, the little branches that are growing at the base of the tree or, or very low on, on the tree trunk. And suckers start growing and they're, they're, they're not growing from the tree, they're really growing from the root system. And so what you have to do is, is it very important that you cut off the suckers? Because if you don't, all they're doing is they're taking the nutrients from the roots and they're taking the best nutrients before the nutrients can get up to the branches. And if you leave the suckers unattended, eventually they're going to take over the rest of that tree. And there are things in our lives that are sucking the life out of us that God comes and he tries to cut off. And we can either yield or we can resist. But God's like, look, I'm just trying to help you out. There are things that are sucking the life out of you. Maybe it's a habit. Maybe it's an addiction. Maybe it's an unhealthy relationship or an unhealthy thought process. I don't know what that thing is for you, but, but it's sucking the life from you. 
And God's coming and he's trying to take it. And you're like, God, that hurts too bad. I can't let go of that. It's going to overtake you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to destroy you. You can't be fruitful with this thing in your life. God, don't do it. We have to yield ourselves to, to the cleanup process. See, after we get the tree cleaned up and after we get rid of all the dead, diseased, and, and damaged, and we get rid of all, all the suckers, the, the next step, and this is the next step I want you to write down, is to thin out. Somebody say thin out. Thin out. Now, now in the thin out phase, really what's happening here is, is there are these things called water sprouts. I told you, I learned a lot studying for this message. But it's it like made this text make so much sense to me. There are these things called water sprouts and they grow straight up from the branches and they have leaves and they, 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 it looks like growth. But really all it's doing is keeping the sunlight from reaching the branch that it needs to reach. They don't grow down, they grow straight up. And when they, when they bear leaves, it keeps the sun from reaching the branch to make it produce more fruit. And so the thin out phase is going through and getting rid of all of these branches that are blocking the sun from reaching the, the, the fruit. And in our lives, it's these things that, that they may not be inherently bad, but they're keeping his light from reaching our heart. They're not necessarily sucking the life out of us. They're just not helping us get the fullness of the life that he wants to give us. Does that make sense? And so there are these, these things that I think oftentimes we do just to do. And people come in and they say, Pastor, I can't, I can't serve because I'm too busy. I can't attend a small group because I'm too busy. Or I can't, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't, I can't go, I can't serve, I can't do outreach, I can't do missions. I'm just, I have all of these things going, I'm just too busy. Listen, if you're too busy, for a small group, if you're too busy to be at church every week, if you're too busy to be investing where you need to be investing and being invested in where you need to be invested in, then I would, call, I would say you've got some water sprouts and some things that maybe are blocking his light from reaching your life. And these are, these are branches that might be fruitful. There might be fruit on these branches, but they're not as fruitful as they could be because they're not getting the level of light that they need to get. And so what are those things that, that we need to get rid of? Not because they're bad, not because it's discipline. See, in the cleanup phase, the pruning is discipline. It's God taking those things out of you that need to be gone. In, in the, the thin out phase, the pruning is really about shaping. It's about shaping us to look more like his son. It's like Mr. Miyagi with the bonsai tree. A little clip here and a little clip here will make the tree look a certain way. And our job is to reflect him. Our job is to reflect his glory, to, to be his image on this earth. And so if we're not being that to the fullness, then oftentimes the father will come and he'll just begin taking things out. Not that they're bad, but we just need to look more like him. And so this thin out phase, this, this pruning process is about shaping, it's about shaping our, shaping our lives. See, as I, I looked at these water sprouts, the dangerous thing about water sprouts is they have the appearance of growth but they don't bear fruit. They have the appearance of productivity, but there's no fruit from it. And so really the question we have to ask ourselves is what are the things that I'm doing that's not bearing fruit in my life? Or what are the things that I'm doing that's not leading to positive change in my life? Does that make sense? What are the things that I'm doing that are, are maybe keeping me from experiencing that positive change that that God wants to bring. So pruning is, yes, there are times where, where it's discipline, where it's getting rid of those dead things, the, the things that are bad for you, the unhealthy things. But then there's times where it's not inherently bad. It's just about shaping us to make us look more like, like the Father. And, and so it's, it's clean up and then it's thin out. And then the third step and it, it's, it's to bring in. Somebody say bring in. That's the third thing I want you to write down. It's to, to bring in. Now, in the cleanup phase, pruning was about discipline. In the thin out phase, pruning was about shaping. And in the bring in phase, pruning is simply because he cares. It's not that anything is bad. It's not that anything is wrong. What they do in the bring in phase is they, they find a healthy branch 
One that's bearing fruit, maybe it's bearing a lot of fruit, and what they do is they go out to the end of the branch and they cut about two feet off the end of the branch. Like, why would you do that? That branch is growing, that branch is healthy, that branch is, is producing fruit. Why would you cut two feet off that branch? Why not let it grow? Because here's what happens. That branch, yes, it will continue to grow out, and it, it might grow 30 feet out, but it would be as thin as a pencil. And if it continues to grow out, yes, it's healthy and yes, it bears fruit. But when that fruit comes, that branch will, will break under the weight of that fruit. And so what they do is they clip two feet off the end so that that branch stops growing outwardly and begins to grow inwardly. It doesn't grow out, but it grows, it grows thicker, it grows wider. Why? So that it can bear the weight of more fruit. Some of you want to be fruitful, but you're not ready to bear the weight of the fruit that God wants to bring you. Some of, you, some of you say, God, you gave me this dream. Why am I not walking in this dream? Or why am I not living out this dream? And it's because you've resisted the pruning process. He's come and he's tried to cut things off of you to make you able to, to withstand the season that is coming. Listen, he knows that, that the harvest season is coming. He knows that the fruitful season is coming. But he also knows that if he doesn't do some pruning, that when that harvest comes, you won't be able to handle it. God, why aren't you blessing me? Because you're not able to handle it. God, why aren't you blessing my finances? And God says, because you're not tithing. And if I were to, if I were to give you a million dollar job and you're not tithing on the $10,000 job, what makes you think that when you get over here, you're going to be faithful with what I'm giving you over here if you're not being faithful with what I'm giving you over here? It's the same thing. We, we want the fruit, but God wants to make us strong enough to be able to bear the fruit. And that's the bring in phase. That's the, the phase where, where he's trying to bring us. And, and so, you know, it's, it's those times where God allows things to happen to us, where we look at it like, really, God, what's going on? And, and oftentimes when these, these, these seasons come and these situations come, we think either, number one, it's the devil, which I think the devil gets way too much credit for way too many things. The devil didn't put the wine glass in front of me. The devil didn't make you get that flat tire. You didn't check the tire pressure for a year and a half. That's what made you get the flat tire. Devil didn't make your engine blow up. Maybe if you change the oil every now and then, stop giving the devil credit. He's like, like, man, I didn't have to do anything. And they're giving me all this credit. It wasn't him. Sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. But listen, we either give the devil credit or we think that God is punishing us. God, why are you punishing? God, what am I doing? God, why, why, why are you disciplining me? And listen, you need to understand that in the pruning process, yes, there are times where it's discipline. There are times where it's shaping, but there's also times where it's just caring for you. Sometimes we get pruned because we're doing something wrong, but you need to understand today that sometimes we get pruned not because we're doing something wrong, but because we're doing something right. You need to understand that maybe you're just being pruned. Maybe you're just being pruned because you're bearing fruit. And because you're bearing fruit, God knows that you can bear more fruit. And in order to, to prepare you to bear more fruit, he's got to do some pruning. Because here's what happens. It's James chapter 1. It's a scripture that I've been quoting to myself for the last three days. James says, consider it an opportunity for joy when you face trials of many kinds. Because, you know, the testing of your faith works patience. And patience, when it's had its full work, will make you mature and complete, lacking nothing. We want to be mature and complete, lacking nothing. We just don't want to go through the trials in order to get there. Here's what happens. When you go through the fire, when you go through the pruning process, what happens is you have to lean into something. You can't go through it on your own. And what you lean into will show you what you trust in. God, I'm going through a hard time financially. Are you leaning into him as your provider? Or are you leaning into your job as your provider? God, I'm going through a hard time physically. Are you leaning on that doctor as your healer? Are you leaning on him as the great physician? I'm not saying don't go to doctors. Be smart. But what are you leaning on? I go to the doctors. Absolutely. I get advice from doctors. Absolutely. But they're not my healer. He's my healer. They're just a tool that he chooses to use at times. 
Are you leaning into yourself or are you leaning into him? When you go through a pruning season, you will lean into something. It's that bring in process. And and when we lean into him, we trust in him. And when we trust in him, our faith is strengthened. And when our faith is strengthened, then it doesn't matter what comes, we're going to go through it. Why? Because I lean not on my own understanding, but in all my ways I acknowledge him and he directs my path. And if he's the one directing my path, then I know no matter what steps he asks me to take, no matter what path he lays out for me, it's going to be the best possible path because he knows the plans that he has for me and they're not plans for harm. He's not planning on leading me off of a, the, a cliff face somewhere, but he's, le- he's planning on leading me right into the fullness of his purpose for my life. So what are you leaning into? He's pruning. What are you leaning into? It hurts. I know it hurts. What are you leaning into? Are you leaning into yourself or are you leaning into him? Maybe he's shaping you. Maybe there's things that, that aren't inherently bad but just need to, need to be taken off. It's not that you're not growing. It's not that you're not fruitful. Maybe you're being pruned not because you did something wrong but because you're doing something right. But it's because you're doing something right that God wants you to do right more. <laughs> he wants you to be mo- more fruitful. He wants you to be able to withstand and and be prepared for that blessing when it comes. Maybe it's discipline. And I would venture to say that if it's discipline, (laughs) you've already got that thing in your mind right now because he's been speaking it to you. We all have those things that at times God has to come and say, hey, you need to check this attitude. Hey, you need to get rid of this heart issue. Hey, you need to get rid of this thought process. Hey, this habit, yeah, it's it's taking you down a path you don't want to go on. Hey, this relationship... You need to get rid of that. Maybe it's discipline. Maybe it's shaping. Maybe it's just because God cares. But what I do know is this, that all of us go through the pruning process. Whether you're not fruitful or you are fruitful, you're going to get cut. And what matters is our attitude and our response to the pruning. Because our response to the pruning determines our fruitfulness in the next season. If we resist the pruning now, we won't be as fruitful next season. If we submit ourselves to his plan, say, God, do what you want to do. And then the next harvest season comes, you'll look around at the fruit and say, God, you're crazy. God, you're amazing. God, you're so good. Amen? Amen. Stand with me this morning. Let's pray. Will you stand? I'll sit. <laughs> Lord, I thank you for your word today. God, I thank you that it's alive, that it's living, that it's active, that it's sharper than any two-edged sword able to cut between the soul and the spirit and the joint and the marrow. God, there are times where that sword, the sword of your word, is used as a weapon. And the Bible says that, that it is the sword that we are to use to fight off the enemy. But God, there's times where your word is more like a scalpel. God, it cuts us open and it removes those dead things, those damaged things, those diseased things. There's times where it cuts those things that maybe aren't inherently bad, but just we're we're not getting as much light as we should in our lives. God, there's times where it just prunes us so that we lean into you a little bit so that we'll be able to, to stand firm and to stand strong and stand under the weight of the fruit that we're about to bear in the next season. God, today I pray that each and every one of us would leave this place recognizing that that the pruning process is necessary. God, a tree left unpruned eventually dies, stops bearing fruit. They can't handle the weight of the fruit. And, And God, we don't want to be that tree. We don't want to be those branches that get thrown into a pile and burned. God, we want to be those branches that remain in you and you in us, producing much fruit. So Lord, help us to recognize if it's a a pruning of discipline, God, help us to to yield to that disciplining process, that pruning process to get rid of those things. If it's a shaping shaping season, God, help us to, to acknowledge and to realize, recognize those things that might be keeping your light out of out of our lives to the fullness. God, if it's just about you caring. God, we we yield to that as well, and we say thank you. Even as a father disciplines his child because he cares, we know that that you prune us because you care. Lord, help us to, to recognize where we are and to yield to that process. This morning, if you're here 
with every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody's looking around. You say, you know what, Pastor John, I haven't, I haven't asked Jesus into my heart. I haven't given my life to him today. I want to accept him as my Lord and Savior. Nobody's looking around. If that's you and you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, do me a favor and just raise your hand. Raise it. Thank you, ma'am. Up front. Thank you. On the left. Thank you. In the back. Anybody else? Just, just put it up real quick and put it right back down. I just want to know who I'm. We're just going to pray. I'm not going to call you for it. I'm not going to embarrass you. Thank you, sir. You can put it back down. Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray, and then we'll be dismissed. If you raise your hand, just pray this prayer. Mean it from your heart. There's nothing magical in the words, but the Bible says that if we would confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that we would be saved. And that's what we're, that's what we're going to do. And church, would you help us pray today? Just say, Jesus, thank you so much that you loved me enough to come and give your life. And so today, I confess with my mouth, I've made mistakes, and I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. And today, I receive you as my Savior, and accept you as my Lord. Change me from the inside out. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Lord, I thank you for those that prayed that prayer, some for the first, some for the hundredth time. It doesn't matter. But God, the Bible says there are angels in rejoicing in heaven right now because of their decision. And God, today we celebrate with them. Lord, help us to, to go from this place, recognizing, realizing that, that growth is a process, that growth is painful, but healthy things grow. And God, we were created to grow. So God, may we not resent a little pain for the growth that you want to bring. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. God bless.